good afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you're watching from. I'd really just like to share a quick testimony with you all. Uh, I was on the phone earlier today with a, a brother in Christ. And God, he loves to speak to us in the most mysterious ways, right? And so it looked like the screen had started digitizing. Um, almost like when I was looking at this brother, all of a sudden, uh, he was uh, see-through. He was uh, translucent. Um, and I'm like, what is this, Lord? Is this is this the devil just trying to mess with the connection? Or is this you? Are you trying to tell us something? What is it? And I heard the word transparency. So I looked up the word transparency, and this is what I got. Transparency, to be transparent, is being open and honest without secrets, telling the truth and able to be trusted, clear and easy to understand or recognize. And I like these next two especially. Permitting the uninterrupted passage of light or transmitting light. So what the Lord was explaining here is that there is an uninterrupted passage of light, the light of Christ, the light of the world that is able to shine through us, that is able to be transmitted outward through us when we are transparent, when we are real, when we are upfront. I'm not talking about your Sunday church face. I'm talking about the one that says, yes, I'm a Christian. I have battles and struggles too. Yes, I'm a Christian, but I haven't, I haven't arrived yet. There's still some areas where I need to grow and improve, and I'll probably be growing and improving until Jesus calls me home. How about we get real on this channel? Can, can, we, can we get an amen for being real today? Can we stop putting on that fake and phony facade that tells everybody that it's good every day and twice on Sunday? Can we stop doing that, please? Can we be real? Because you know what? Pride. Pride is at the root of it all. Pride. Pride wants you, it wants everybody to believe that everything is all good with you, that you've got life all figured out, and they just need to jump on board and get to where you're at. Hallelujah. But transparency is being open and honest without secrets. So you can actually look that person in the face and be like, you know what? I've got some idols in my own heart. And I pray that God removes them every day. Because the Lord said, his, his number one command is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. An idol is anything that you give more attention than you give to God. An idol is not just a statue that you bow down to. No, an idol is something that you place above the Lord Jesus Christ. An idol is something that you place above the Lord and say, yeah, I, I know I should be reading my word and I should be meditating on it day and night. I know I should be studying to show myself approved. I really know that when I'm growing weary in my well-doing, the number one place I need to be is in the presence of God. However, I really just want to talk on the phone with my friend. I really just want to forget about all that right now and jump into some worldly activity but how many of us know I hope a lot of us know by now that that will not sustain you long term hallelujah and as a matter of fact hmm if God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and he calls our wisdom foolishness then the last place we need to be seeking advice from is somebody without the Holy Spirit I'm just going to call it like it is, okay? So we need to be transparent. We need to be real. Now, that being said, I'm not saying be abrasive. I'm not saying be rude because that is not the way of the Lord either. He tells us that we're supposed to do everything as unto him. Would you be rude to Jesus? Would you be rude to God? Would you be short with him? Would you cut him off? Would you be abrasive? Would you be impatient with him? No. And so he wants us to do unto others how we would have things done unto us. He wants us to speak the truth 
but tone it down a notch. Speak the truth, but in love. Speak the truth graciously. Speak the truth and put your self-righteousness in your pocket until you get delivered. Hallelujah. Speak the truth in love graciously with your words seasoned with salt. Bitter and sweet water should not be coming out of the same spring, the same mouth. Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's the lesson for today. Transparency. It's so important, right? How many of us know that the devil comes at us early trying to keep us from being transparent? Trying to keep us from being real, true to ourselves, and our authentic because he comes at you hard and heavy so that you will start to believe that there's something defective, broken or damaged in you that needs fixing or adjusting or adaptation. No, you, you don't need to be adjusted. You don't need to be fixed. You need Jesus Christ. However, the image and likeness that you were created in is exactly the one God intended for you to have. Hallelujah. So we're going to expel the lie today. I know that uh, culture and society tells you that to have unnatural affection, a, a woman desiring another woman and a man desiring another man is, is perfectly acceptable and it's normal. And that they were born like this. They might have been born with those kinds of tendencies, but they came in through ancestral sin. They came in through generational curses. Jesus became a curse to free us from the curse. And identity confusion is exactly what that is. And Jesus wants to set you free from identity confusion. Satan wanted to make you hate who God made you to be. Satan wanted to tell you that you were damaged goods. Satan wanted to tell you that there's something wrong with you. That you're defective. That you could be new and improved if you only looked a certain way, talked a certain way, dressed a certain way no 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 you are just fine the way God made made you no need for adjustments the only thing that needs adjusting in you is your heart your heart the heart is deceitfully wicked and so our, our heart will tell us that love is love right love is love but what we call love is really lust what we call love is really lust because if it wasn't, you would have self-control and you would actually wait to get married before you had any kind of sexual relations with that individual. Sex outside of marriage is fornication. God is against that for good reason. Sins against the body are the, the worst of their kind. But we'll get into that in, on a different day. So today, two major strongholds were broken for this brother. I'm celebrating with him. But I want to break this down for you to show you how in depth these assignments from hell really are. And how many areas are being influenced in that individual to keep them in a perpetual state of bondage. So today, while we were on the call... The Lord revealed that there were two strongholds. The first one is identity confusion and the other one was demasculization. Now for anybody that doesn't know what a stronghold is. In the Bible it says you, have to, must, you must first bind the strong man and plunder his goods before you can touch anything in the house. Right? So let's think about a stronghold like a demonic fortress that's set up in your mind. Right? And in order to be able to get anywhere near what's in the house, you have to bind the strong man. The strong man is operating from the heavenly realms. The strong man is in charge of all the little lower ranking spirits down here that he's directing like puppets on a string to keep that person in a perpetual cycle of identity confusion. And self-hatred, which is really at the root of identity confusion. So underneath the stronghold of identity confusion were the following spirits. Identity confusion, confusion, bewilderment, perplexity, 
distortion, perversion, turmoil, disturbance, shame, disgust, self-consciousness, pride, anger, bitterness, resentment, self-rejection, self-condemnation, self-criticism, trauma, molestation, homosexuality, effeminacy, incest, self-hatred, self-loathing, and a spirit of denial, particularly denial of self. So here's a breakdown. I'm going to try to read these because uh, the Lord was speaking pretty quick and I was trying to write it all down. Hallelujah. But under the spirit of identity confusion, these are the areas that were being influenced. His self-image, mentality, conscience, will, emotions, moods, feelings, nervous system, nerves, breathing, respiratory system, throat, larynx, trachea, lungs, heart, thoughts and meditations of his heart, beliefs, ideas, motives, intentions, replies and responses, reactions, reaction time, impulses and inclinations, stomach, eating, digestive tract, digestive system, stomach lining, obsession with his weight, self-image, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, self-respect, eyes, sight and vision, ears and hearing, dialogue, conversations, communication, attachments, friendships, relationships, ability to say what he's feeling, ability to articulate feelings, ability to speak up when needed. And under those right there, Mm, hallelujah where identity confusion confusion bewilderment perplexity distortion perversion and we'll stop there the next ones were disturbance shame disgust self-consciousness pride anger bitterness and resentment so those ones right there were influencing the following. Eyes, sight, and vision, ears and hearing, self-image, body image, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, ideas, beliefs, thoughts, mind, imaginations, hearts, the thoughts and meditations of his heart, his emotions, moods, feelings, habits, stomach, appetite, obsession with his weight, obsessing about what he eats, behavior, conduct, demeanor, and mannerisms. The next ones were anger, bitterness, resentment. Anger, bitterness, and resentment were influencing the following areas. Emotions, moods, feelings, behavior, mannerisms, demeanor, actions, attitude, mentality, beliefs, thoughts, ideas, eyes, sight, and vision, heart, thoughts, and meditations of the heart, hands, fists, arms, legs, feet, and his conscience. After that were self-rejection, self-condemnation, self-criticism, trauma, molestation, homosexuality, effeminacy, incest, self-hatred, self-loathing, and denial. Those were all together. Wait until you hear how many different places they were influencing. His self-esteem, his self-worth, his self-image, his beliefs and his abilities, his attitude, his thoughts, his ideas, his beliefs, perceptions, imaginations, emotions, moods and feelings, dreams, mouth, words, speech, dialogue, conversations, communication, interactions, friendships and attachments, relationships, ability to re relate well to others, mentality, heart, bloodline, family, experiences, memories, recollections, dreams, eyes, sight, vision, spiritual sight, his spiritual sight, being able to have dreams and visions from the Lord, ears, hearing, spiritual hearing, being able to hear from the Lord clearly. There was a blockage there, mentality, conscience, thoughts, beliefs, ideas, perceptions, imaginations, reasoning and logic, attitude, voice, words, mouth, tongue, throat, glands, speech, vocal cords, diaphragm, breathing, respiratory system, nervous system, digestive system, stomach, appetite, obsession with food. 
was an inf influencing an obsession with food and what he eats and whether or not it was a sin to eat certain things. Demeanor, mannerisms, conduct, behavior, actions, hands, legs, back, spine, skin. This is what the Lord said during the, <laughs> hallelujah, glory be to God. This is what the Lord said during the deliverance. No more eczema, says the Lord. No more rejection of who I created, says the Lord. Then these spirits were also influencing his heart, thoughts and meditations of the heart, image of self, self-esteem, self-worth, self-confidence, body image. And the Lord ended with this, you will no longer torment him with feelings of condemnation, says the Lord. So that's that right there. The last two were the spirits of turmoil and disturbance. Turmoil and disturbance were assigned to his soul, his mind, his overall experiences, his bloodline, his relationships, his attachments, his family. And the Lord ended on that note with, You will no longer cause discord and division in this family, says the Lord. That stronghold was officially broken and everything left. The next one. The next one was the stronghold of demasculization. Again, a strong man in the Bible is supposed to be bound first and its goods plundered in the name above any other name. In the name at which every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. The following spirits were under this. Demasculization, effeminacy, homosexuality, Ahab, which was Jezebel's husband, self-rejection, girliness, timidity, shyness, reservation, avoidance, passive aggression, self-hatred, self-loathing, self-criticism, confusion, identity confusion, shame, blame, disgust, denial, again specifically of himself, phoniness, falsehood, facade, and an actual curse placed upon him just for the words being spoken, whether he spoke them or not, or somebody else is irrelevant, of having a poker face. Okay? Under demasculization, effeminacy, homosexuality, Ahab, self-rejection, girliness, timidity, shyness, reservation, avoidance, and passive aggression. So all of those were the following. And there was quite a bit. So stick with me. They were attacking his identity. The Lord said you will no longer cause identity confusion he started off there they were influencing his mind his thoughts his conscience his will his beliefs his ideas attitude perceptions imaginations dreams conduct and behavior actions demeanor habits inclinations and impulses heart thoughts and meditations of the heart feet hands fingers body language mannerisms demeanor emotions moods feelings memories recollections ability to focus and concentrate Eyes, sight, vision, words, speech, dialogue, conversations, communication, mouth, speech, oof. communication, interaction, relationships, attachments, friendships, bloodline, family, mannerisms, demeanor, conduct, behavior, actions, body language, facial expressions, and it gets to be more. Ears, hearing, neck, head, face, interactions, bloodline, family, self-image, self-esteem, self-confidence, vocal cords, breathing, breath, respiratory system, bones, back, spine, neck, throat, stomach, appetite, eating habits, impulse control. The Lord said after that, you will no longer fly off the handle. You will no longer cause fits of aggression, speaking to their spirits. You will no longer cause problems in his ability to relate to others, to listen with a sympathetic ear or empathize with them. After that, spirits of self-hatred, self-loathing, self-criticism, confusion, identity confusion, shame, blame, disgust. 
and denial. We're all affecting the following areas. Self-image, self-confidence, self-worth, identity, mentality, mind, thoughts, beliefs, ideas, perceptions, imaginations, emotions, moods, feelings, mouth, throat, tongue, speech, words, pitch, tone, clarity, bloodline, family, experiences, memories, cognition, recollections, eyes, sight, vision, ears, hearing, skin, body, hands, feet, torso, stomach my lord attitude demeanor behavior conduct habits abdomen mm. replies responses and reactions after that were phoniness falsehood and facade facade was the name of a spirit by the way they were affecting his identity behavior demeanor mannerisms conduct mouth speech words dialogue attitude emotions moods feelings heart thoughts and meditations of his heart the weight of his heart will be removed right now the lord said so there was something weighting down his heart body language relational skills ability to relate well to others ability to get along well with others and the Lord finished with, you will no longer cause confrontation or dispute. Again, addressing the spirits. Both of those strongholds were broken. Now, while we were talking and wrapping up the conversation, he started to feel not quite right again. And he said something about stuttering, which I had noticed in the very beginning as we were addressing the spirits under the stronghold of identity confusion that when he renounced confusion he started to stutter so the lord confirmed that the spirit of confusion was still hanging out and hadn't left yet praise god because we wouldn't know unless he revealed these things so confusion was commanded to go and that feeling that he was feeling that was making him uneasy left and that was the end of that hallelujah all glory to the one who was and is and is to come the one true living god yeshua hamashiach jesus christ hallelujah the god of abraham isaac and jacob this is to lift up his name this is to praise his holy name this is not for self-exaltation this is not to glory in myself i can't do anything apart from jesus this is to let you know that god is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change change jesus christ was performing mighty miracles two thousand years ago at when he walked among us on the earth during his ministry which he was here for 33 and a half years but only three and a half of those years was he actually doing his ministry hallelujah so matthew mark luke and john are over the span of 3.5 years of his ministry and one of his disciples actually said we couldn't even record all of the miracles that he performed so all the glory belongs to god i hope this blessed somebody today i hope you all are well i hope there's nice weather where you are um and please you know uh, drop it in the comments if there's something i can pray for you i will do my very best to answer all the prayer requests as they're coming in within a, a timely fashion please keep in mind that i'm only one person but i do love all of you and if it's if it's something that's really pressing and i haven't answered you after a while feel free to remind me that you sent me a prayer request and i will go back and look for it to make sure that you are answered god bless you i love you all bye